Hello and welcome back to Will It Work? Over the past few years, I've made a couple of videos on testing out lightning devices with the 7th generation iPod Nano, which is the only traditional iPod with a lightning port. The results weren't good, with very few accessories working. One of the biggest disappointments was the lack of support for lightning headphones and earbuds. Absolutely nothing would work except for one lone model, the Sony MDR-1A DAC. Like all lightning headphones, these receive digital audio and convert it to analog on device. Sony's manual for these headphones listed support for the 7th generation Nano, and my testing in that video proved this to be true. At the time, I didn't know why these lightning headphones alone worked, merely speculating that Sony took the time to make them compatible with the 7th generation Nano. I now know why this model works, and I want to go over this first, and then later we'll see if older 30-pin iPods can connect digitally to these very unique headphones. Let's get started. Okay, so here we have a lightning speaker dock with an iPhone plugged into it. Let's see what this speaker dock is reporting itself as in the Music App's audio selector source. Well, it says dock connector. That makes sense. This is a lightning speaker dock after all. Okay, so here I have some of Apple's lightning ear pods plugged in. Let's see what they are reporting themselves as. Headphones. Well, that makes sense. They're pretty much headphones. Now here's where it gets interesting. All of this has been in front of my eyes for years. I just never was able to connect the dots. This is Apple's lightning dock. It has a DAC inside of it that converts digital audio from an iPhone to analog audio out of a 3.5 millimeter jack in the back. This should report itself as a dock connector just like the lightning speaker dock did a minute ago, right? No. It says headphones. That's when the light bulb went off in my head. The audio selector on the iPhone is not literally talking about headphones and speaker docks, but two distinct audio protocols. So I went back and did some research. There wasn't a lot of information out there on the subject, but it basically breaks down to this. The audio standard for dock connector has been there since the introduction of the lightning port in 2012 and supports the 7th Gen Nano along with all iOS devices even to this day. Two years later, Apple created a new lightning headphone audio standard to allow third parties to make lightning headphones and earbuds that could be powered by the iPhone itself. This was rolled out in iOS 8, and even though the 7th Gen Nano was still a shipping product, Apple never updated the venerable iPod OS to support this new standard. That's why no lightning headphones work with the 7th generation Nano, and Apple's lightning dock also uses this new standard as well, explaining why the DAC in it doesn't work with the Nano. Now wait a minute, you're saying, how is it these lightning headphones work with the Nano then? Well, I've plugged them into the iPhone. Let's see what they report themselves as in the audio selector. Dock connector. So essentially, these are a lightning speaker dock in headphones form. Now, it's hard to pin down a release date on these speakers because I believe they were released in Japan before coming to the United States. But essentially, they came out a few months before Apple introduced that new lightning headphone standard. So Sony just went with what they had at the time, which was the dock connector audio standard. So now that we have a pair of lightning headphones that work with the iPod OS, can we get them working with older 30-pin iPods as well? Do 30-pin iPods even have the option to output audio digitally? The answer is, some of them do. The first iPod to be able to output audio digitally was the first generation Nano, released in September of 2005, followed by the fifth generation iPod or video iPod the following month. These two models do have some quirks and caveats, however. For one thing, the click wheel controls are locked out from use when connected to a device that can extract digital audio from the iPod. You might have seen this before when you hook up an iPod to your car head unit over USB to encourage you to use buttons on the steering wheel instead. These 2005 models will do the same thing even with home equipment, and the compatibility of these models with this home equipment is not good. I'm going to make a video on all of this in the near future, so stay tuned for that. Needless to say, the first generation Nano does not work with these Sony headphones. Let's jump ahead one year to 2006 and the second generation iPod Nano. 
Apple tweaked their accessory protocol to allow manufacturers to decide whether the click wheel interface stays on or is locked out. This model does not lock out its controls with home equipment and the compatibility is much better among home devices that can extract digital audio from it. So how are we going to plug in a lightning connector to a 30-pin iPod? We're going to use this third-party adapter. Now, Apple never made an adapter that works in this direction. Theirs was a male lightning to female 30-pin connector. Apple's product was an active adapter containing sophisticated circuitry and microchips. Included in this was a DAC, an authentication chip, and the ability to convert the serial connections of 30-pin accessories to something a lightning device would understand. This third-party adapter is a passive adapter and contains no sophisticated circuitry. It merely bridges the USB data and the USB power pins from a 30-pin device to a lightning cable. These are sold strictly as sync and charge adapters. Okay, so let's plug this in and see if it works. Working great. That is awesome. A 2006 iPod Nano second generation working digitally with these lightning headphones. I've got one more 30 pin iPod we can try. Okay, here is the sixth generation iPod Nano, which was the last iPod to be introduced by Steve Jobs while I was still alive. Let's see if this works. Working great. Working absolutely great. So why do older 30-pin iPods work with the dock connector audio protocol? Remember when I said that this protocol was there from day one when Apple introduced the lightning connector? In reality, it's been around since the mid-2000s, when iPods first gained the ability to output audio digitally. Back then, iPods didn't have anything like the iPhone's audio source selector, where we could see what the protocol or device was in use. And why doesn't Sony's manual talk about using 30-pin iPods with these headphones? Well, I don't believe these adapters were around in 2014, and even if they were, Sony wasn't going to support them with their own products. At the end of the day, this is a case of pure serendipity. If Sony had made these headphones six months to a year later, they undoubtedly would have used the newer Lightning headphone standard, and no 30-pin iPods would have ever had the ability to use digital headphones. By the way, the MDR-1A DAC are the most versatile digital headphones I've ever seen. Beyond the unique abilities I've shown you here today, they come with a series of cables that can connect digitally to a variety of proprietary and non-proprietary devices. Perhaps I'll do a full video on these headphones someday, showing off all of their unique features. Well, that's going to do it for this video. As always, if you're enjoying this channel, please like and subscribe. I'll be back soon, but that's all for now. Take care.